This is Scott Dorner with the Hot Company. I'm going to be taking you through how to use the BOD Manager, uh, specifically the Worksheet Manager portion of it. And right here, we're in the main form, uh, the main dashboard of the D BOD Manager product. And I'm going to go ahead and click the shortcut to get into the Worksheet Manager. So what I see here is the uh, BOD Worksheet Manager comes up. This is where we're going to enter our initial and final DOs, and uh, our BODs are going to be calculated, and standard methods is going to be applied to it. So what I'm going to do is I've got two key buttons here. One is I can create a new worksheet, and one is I can uh, load up an existing sheet. So right now I want to create a new worksheet. So I click New, and it gives me several options. And what I want to do is I'm going to build a BOD worksheet. When I click it, it comes up and it lists all these samples. Now these samples are set up through Sample Setup, which there's also a shortcut on our dashboard for it. And when you initially ran the BOD Manager, the wizard asked you, uh, what samples do you, do you run? So I'm going to set it up for uh, March 2nd here. I'm going to say I do dilution blank, I do a seed, I do influent, and I do effluent. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick the things that I run. Uh, on this particular day. In the GGA standard, I don't, so I don't set it up. And I click OK, and the BOD manager gets loaded up. Now, several things you're going to notice here. One is, is that it uh, does ask for the bottle numbers. It has all the sample volumes already loaded. And again, like for Influent, we decided to run 2, 5, and 8. The program didn't decide that. When you went into Sample Setup, you set your default dilutions, and you can change those if you have to on the fly by simply just editing that. Now, what I'm going to do is I mentioned that when we run BODs, uh, criteria is applied against uh, all the bottles and dilutions. To look at that criteria, I'm going to go to Criteria Setup. And I see some kind of simple things such as show initial temperature, initial pH, and final temperature. And what that's really saying is notice initial temperature is a column here. Now some people don't need to track this. So if you don't have to track it on a per bottle basis, you can just simply unclick these things and it's going to hide those columns. Now, onto the standard methods criteria, it's going to go through and all these things have been defaulted to what standard method says. Uh, maximum initial DO is set to 9. Now, this is one that a lot of our users sometimes will have to change. Again, if you're living uh, up north and uh, the water is very cold, the the water will be super saturated with oxygen. This initial DO may be hard to get, and you don't want all your bottles marked all the time, then you have to unmark them and say, yeah, yeah, I know. So you can raise this to 10 if you want to. So you do get to edit the criteria for your specific local conditions. Again, this default button right here will default you back to standard methods. So it applies the criteria for the GGA test, um, the uh, depletion, has to be at least two. So all those things are set up here. And again, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get in and just say that looks good to me. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to resize the window just so it looks a little better. And now I'm going to go ahead and enter in my initial DOs. Now I can do that in several ways. One is I can simply click on the cells and start typing it. Also, you can hook up your HQ40D uh, Hawk meter with an LDO probe and use read uh, from initials and read from finals. Uh, there is another video that shows you specifically how to go through these steps and so for speed's sake I'm just going to kind of type this data in. So my initial DO is 8.11 and then maybe 8.13 my seed is 8.44 uh, 8.45 8.4 and we'll say these are 8, 8.1 and 8 and my affluence 8.2, 8.2, and 8.3. So I come through, I basically that's all I need to do. I click Save, and now that's in there. Now I did forget to do one thing, so I'm going to fill in my analyst name. That's My name has to be Scott Dorner, so I'll say I'm doing it. And again, this was set up when you originally ran the wizard. It asked you for personnel. You typed in some names, and these are the names here, so we can track who's doing what. So again, I'm going to click Save. Now what I want to do is I want to load up an open worksheet. You know, what open work do I have? So I'm going to go ahead and click my three dots. And it's going to show all my open worksheets. I've got one open for Monday. That's the one I just did. Last Tuesday, I still have one open. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that one to load it up. And now I see that my initials are already entered. I'm going to go in and uh, enter in my final DO. So for my dilution blank, it's 8 and let's say 7.9. And for my seed, 
it's uh, 6.28, let's say, uh, 4.55. 1.94, my influent is uh, 6.4, 4.55, and 2.55. GGA, let's say it's 6.1, 4.5, and uh, 3.1, or 2.1. On my effluent, I will say again, it starts at 6.2, drops to 4, maybe drops a little more. So I go ahead and I enter in my uh, DOs, and now I'm going to click this button here that's called Check and Calculate. And when I click it, it's going to go through and it's going to calculate my BODs for each bottle. It's going to calculate the average BOD. And it's also going to apply standard methods criteria. And you see some of these rows are highlighted in green, and that means they didn't pass criteria. So the simplest one that I, at least for me, is that the d dilution blank, which really shouldn't drop at all, dropped from 8.1 to 7.8. So it depleted 0.33, and it tells you that right here in the status bar. In invalid test, it's insufficient or invalid depletion. Now my seed, when I click on that, it says, again, it's insufficient or invalid depletion, and that's 1.91, it needs to deplete at least two, and you see the same problem here. Now the GGA standard doesn't meet the standard test for acceptability, which again we set up in criteria setup, saying that it had to be between 163 and 237, so it's saying, hey, they, they didn't pass, but this one did. Also notice that on influent here, that my average is 216, and my three bottles calculated at 270, 219, and 213. So you can see that it only takes the average of the valid bottles. So the reportable BOD of 216 is of the good bottles. So it automatically pulls those out of the average. Now, uh, some of the other things that you can do here is in the case that you want to override the standard methods criteria for whatever purpose, you can come in here and say, you know what, I want to use this bottle anyway. That is what these buttons up here are for. You can actually mark a bottle or unmark it manually. So if I unmark it, notice now that um, when I did that, my average here changed, but then all of a sudden I had a bigger problem with my effluent because now the C correction factor is out of range. So you know what? I didn't like doing that. So now I'm going to go ahead and mark that bottle again. And now my effluent passed this test. So uh, in the real world, people sometimes, you know, if all three bottles come up invalid, you may have a, an algorithm or a standard operating procedure that says pick the best one according to this criteria. And that's the way that you can apply those rules. Again, I'm going to save this uh, worksheet. I can also print it out, and I mark status. That's Notice that when I pulled that up, it only showed my open um, bench sheets. So if I come in here, if I set the status to closed, and I go back in, and now I say I want to look at, and let's save it again, and I want to go back and look at my open worksheets, it shows just the ones that are open. I've got this Monday's one. That was the one I just worked on. I can also say, you know what, I just want to look at the closed ones, so those are the two that I just closed. Essentially, that's really it for the BOD manager. Um, it's just a quick tool that allows you to kind of take control of that BOD test. It does interface to the HQ40D, and uh, it allows you to mark the status. It allows you to uh, make sure that we're always applying standard methods criteria properly to the thing, that it handles seed. All of those kinds of things are now all handled for you. Thank you very much.